Hello there and welcome. My name is Theo Van Dort and this is going to be the Technophobes Guide to Internet Marketing Success with Mark Atwood, founder of the Technophobes <laughs> Guide to Internet Marketing yep. Success and the Entrepreneurs Internet Marketing, Internet Academy. Marketing Academy. That's a big mouthful. I <laughs> there is a lot for me to remember in one go, especially this time of the morning. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for that introduction, Theo. Um, first part of uh, the Technophobes Guide is really to cover off keyword research because keyword research is something that very few people do properly and very few people understand. Uh, but you can't do anything online until you've done your keyword research. So I'm just going to talk, go back to my screen here. Um, this is current. This is being filmed in uh, what date are we on at the moment? It's about we're April, in uh, 2000, April 2014. 13. So about 14. You're right. So about <laughs> six months ago, about six months ago, Google had a free keyword tool that they had on the internet, and in their infinite wisdom, they decided to put that inside AdWords. You may be cynical and think, "Isn't that just designed to make me spend money on AdWords?" And you'd probably be right because one of the things you need to know is that you can't trust Google because it is a massive company with shareholders and everything else. It's all about profits and about 90 per plus percent of their revenue comes from AdWords. If you haven't got an AdWords account, don't panic, it's really easy. You just need to have a Google account. If you've got a Google account, that means you can access AdWords, it means you can access YouTube and all their other products and the important ones which I've probably showed, I think you would have watched in the training videos, um, like Google Plus, uh, YouTube and AdWords, those three things you really need to have set up before you start any of this training. So I'm just going to dive straight in because what I want to show you is that um, AdWords is something that you need to be using uh, even if you're not actually spending any money on it. You do need to spend money on it and I'm going to cover that in a future video. Okay. But for now, I'm going to dive straight into an AdWords account, which is, I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to go to AdWords here. Uh, don't <clears throat> we've got Zach in the room back there. Zach, don't show the screen yet because I just want there's a couple of uh, things I want to show first. Um, so this you can show the screen now if we go into training mode. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. You can see this particular account is set up from 2006, and since then there are a number of accounts in here, most of which is money that I've spent. So I'm just going to zoom out there and then zoom in on this. You can see there, personally, I've spent 2.49 million pounds inside AdWords. Two million, which four hundred and ninety thousand six hundred and twenty five pounds on AdWords. Yeah. So I, I would I would uh, um, surmise from that that you've spent quite a long time learning how not to do it. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be absolutely right, Ted. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, the story is that um, when I first started uh, marketing online in 2003, yeah, I built this website. I built a website that cost a lot of money to build. I also spent I spent £5,000 on the logo, which was a massive waste of money, and I spent about £5,000 on a PR agency, which was a massive waste of money. Right. Because what I didn't realise back then is that I needed a steady stream of eyeballs on the website. And then I heard about Google AdWords, because Google AdWords was relatively new then. So I um, locked myself in a room for three days, and I just learnt it, Google AdWords, and I built a massive campaign. That campaign is where most of this money was spent, and um, that generated nearly £40 million pounds so far. Um, because AdWords gives you a consistent stream of traffic. Yeah. And if you do it right, it's phenomenal. But I'm going to cover that in a later video. The point of telling you about AdWords here is um, that it, this is now where the keyword planner is. When you go into your AdWords account, if we've got the screen on there, please, Zach. And if you click on Tools at the top and go down to Keyword Planner, <clears throat> excuse me, the Keyword Planner, this is where Google puts its keyword data. Um, okay. It doesn't tell you the whole picture. It's really important to understand this. This is for stage one of anything that you do online. So this, this shows you some of the keywords, not all of the keywords, that Google thinks is related to what it is that you sell. Right. And I'm not going to get too technical with this because this is the Technophobes Guide. So I want to make this as simple as possible. So Taylor's job is to hopefully stop me if I start babbling and going a bit too quickly. And asking questions, yeah. Yeah, great. So in here, you click on uh, search for new keyword and ad group ideas. And you simply type in a keyword. Now, if you have a business where you are, let's say, you're, for example, you're an employment law solicitor, okay? Yeah. So you want to find, you want traffic to find you. If somebody types an employment law solicitor, you want them to find you. Mm -hmm. But you also need to know what other keywords are within that keyword. So I'm just going to type in employment law solicitor here. And just click get ideas down there. And then this gives you ad group ideas down here, but I'm not interested in that at this point. I want to click on keyword ideas. 
And you can see here that the number of people typing in employment law solicitor is 140 a month on average yep. inside Google. Um, the, the bit where it says competition is high, do you know what that means, Taylor? I would assume that means that the, the two, when you're putting Google AdWords, uh, where well, you're putting that up as a, as a key phrase to, uh, for pay-per-click, that it means that the cost per click is going to be higher. No, what it means is that there's high competition. It means you've got um, 8, 9, 10, 11 spots on page one of Google yep. for an AdWord, and if they're all full, it's high competition. Okay. If they're page two, page three, page four, if there's lots of advertisers, it just means that this makes money. Oh, okay. And you can see here that the cost per click suggested bid, £5.28. That's considerable, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's a lot of money. Just explain cost per click. Yeah. So Or pay per click. Yes, because I did a seminar recently and I said pay per click and I assumed everybody knew what I was talking about and somebody said pay per clip. <laughs> <laughs> pay per click marketing. It's a whole new, whole new subject. <laughs> so um, <laughs> pay per click, if I go to Google... Because we are going to... We are thinking of the technophobe here. We are, we are. So I'm just going to type in the same keyword. And you can see there, employment law solicitor. Those top three positions, can you see that? You've got that screen up, Zach. Good man. So you can see here, the top three positions and these ones down the side here, they are the adverts. Okay. So if I click on this advert here, that's going to cost that company £5.28 approximately. That's what Google is telling us. And then these other ones down here, I'm not going to go into, the, I keep wanting to go into AdWords, but I'm going to hold off on that. Yeah. But that's what it means by, if I click on this, bang, that's £5.28, that company's just had to pay for me to click on it. Okay, so from a simple point of view then, the top three ads that you see on the, on the slide, yep. or, or on, the, on the screen when you do it, they are paid, because they, they now say ads next to them. They, they used do, to say and, that, didn't and they? they used to say sponsored links for years, and they used to hide it, but they've had to be a little bit more honest, because most people don't know the difference. Right, okay. Um, so it, show, it shows those adverts, yep. and then, then the ones down the right-hand side of the screen, underneath where the map probably come, or usually comes up, they're adverts as well. They are. And then the, the ones underneath, these are the organics, Organic, uh, these are organic yeah. So, so these one. are people who will have decent search engine optimization on their website Absolutely. or SEO, search yeah. engine optimization, that's right. and that's why they're appearing. So Chef Solicitors LLP in Wilmslow have done very well. To get well, there. yeah, they have. Um, that, that's I think that's number one because I'm based near that area okay. and it's remembering that search term, but that, that's, uh, that's, what, that's one for the SEO conversation. Okay. But the point is, employment law solicitor, there's the keyword, there's the adverts, and there's the natural listings. So if you go back inside the keyword planner, so you can already see how important or how valuable it is to um, possibly rank at number one for that keyword. Yep. Because it's five pounds twenty-eight per click. And, if, and so that's that's for that's for an advert. For an advert. But if you can get there organically, so if you can get to the top of Google yep. just by what you do on your website and whatever else traffic you drive, yep. then that means that you are potentially saving yourself five pounds twenty-eight per click. Absolutely, and that's where SEO comes into this. Right. But before you do any of that, before you do any of the AdWords, before you do anything else, you've got to go through this keyword research process. Um, so you know, just to finish off on the AdWords side of things, you can see that the value, 100 clicks is going to cost this, you know, if you advertise on that keyword, 100 clicks is going to cost you £528. Mm. So you've got to make sure that if, that if you're paying that much per click, when they land on your site, you're converting them into leads or sales, that that is profitable. And we'll show you how to do that throughout this course. But you can see down here, if I zoom in, we're back on the screen, Zach. Okay, so I've got Employment Law Solicitor here, Employment Law Solicitors Manchester, Employment Law Solicitors London, Employment Law Solicitors Liverpool, Employment Law Advice, Employment Law Solicitor London, Employment Law Solicitors No Win, No Fee. You can see there's quite a lot of Employment Law Solicitor keywords. Yeah, so what is a keyword? Well, a keyword, good question. A keyword is anything you type into this search box here. So it's really a key phrase then? Yeah. It used to be called key phrase, but it, basically we just call them keywords. Okay. And what's very, very important about this is uh, I'm just going to go to the um, – draw. I'm going to do a little drawing for you. If we go over to here, I'm going to draw you this simple chart to, just to understand this idea of keywords. Yeah. This is the shape of any keyword market. And here we have keywords across the bottom, and here we have traffic. Now, what this tells us is here, about 15 to 20% of any traffic in any market is covered by what we call the head of the snake. Well, I call it the head of the snake, which is this, this keyword here, one keyword here. In the case of um, some of the markets that I've been in, uh, you would take skip hire as the big keyword for the skip hire market. 
And down here, you have multiple keywords in the long tail. So this is where 80% of the traffic in any market will be, right? So imagine where all the competition is. Where do you think all the competition is, Taylor? Well, I would imagine the, uh, the competition is going to be in the first 15 20%. It's here. Yeah. Because in any market, what you get is a... Um, it's like, I see markets as like a field full of sheep. Right. And most of the sheep are in the same corner. you get corner. excited by that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do get excited by that. Sorry, Mark. Sorry. I'm not Welsh. Um, <laughs> but all, all the sheep are eating uh, the grass in the same corner of the field. Right. But the majority of the grass is over here. And it's a lot easier to eat it. Yeah. This analogy is going a bit too far now. But, no, I get it. But basically, this long tail, these keywords, if you imagine skip hire is the main keyword in, a, in, in one market that I've been in for 10 years, then skip hire London, skip hire Manchester, skip hire Birmingham. How much is it to hire a skip? Eight yard skip, two yard skip, row row skip. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And in, and in any market, um, in a year, in the skip hire market in particular, the number of keywords, I mean, I actually forget the actual number, but it's tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of keywords down here. Now, if you can find this, these keywords out at the beginning, yeah. you have a massive competitive advantage. So a long tail keyword is actually a, 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 a keyword or a key phrase with lots of words. Yeah. So, and, and more specific. More specific. Okay. And the more specific the keyword is, the more likely somebody's going to buy what you've got if you've got content that matches that keyword. Okay. So that's why you have to do this at the beginning. Yeah. Because if you don't do this at the beginning, you've got no chance. Okay. I mean... It, I'll give you an example. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk through a little case study. One of my clients runs a local business. It's a um, kickboxing club in Poynton in, the, in Cheshire. I went to see him. He had a website, and, which is a very common story for small business owners. I said, who's done your website? And he said, oh, my mate did. And I gave him 300 quid. Okay, which, okay, he's got a website up. But on the top of his page, it just said home. Right, which is very, very common. You see that a lot. If your website says home at the top, you are effectively optimizing your home page for the word home. Okay. Okay, which is not very useful. Mm. So I sat down with him, and this is a good process for you to, go to, you to go through at home as well. If you sit and think about your business, think about what is it that I actually sell. So I said to this guy, Gareth, he was a former uh, European kickboxing champion, fantastic man, runs a fantastic academy. I send my kids there. And I said, what do you actually sell? And he went, kickboxing. I said, yeah, and what else do you do? He said, well, that's it, we're, just, we're a kickboxing club. I said, okay, talk me through the classes that you do. And he said, well, oh, we've got a ladies only fitness in the morning, we've got circuit training, we have kickboxing, we have kids kickboxing, we have kids Muay Thai. When we actually sat and worked it out, mm. it, it, he actually sold 17 products. Right. But he thought he just sold one. Yeah. So what we did is we went through the keyword research stage, we started keyword researching all this. And now, bear in mind, he was ranking nowhere on Google at all for anything. And the first thing I said to him, let's just go and make a video based upon a keyword. So we did, I think it was kids kickboxing classes, Poynton. Right. Yeah, because a lot of people in the village of Poynton, although it's a small village, didn't know he was there because his place is not very high visibility. And people do search on the, they search on the internet for stuff even if it's localized. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know where everything is in the village that I live in. Who does? So, so let's have a look. Um, kids kick, kick. Boxing, I can't spell. <laughs> okay, let's go to the screen. Yeah. Now his business is called uh, the Shanty Acad is called the Shanty Academy. Now you can see here there is Shanty Academy in the AdWords at number one because we want to buy this. We want this traffic. Yeah. You want the traffic at the top. If you're not in position one, you're not getting as much traffic as you can get. Okay. The other great thing about AdWords is that we're measuring everything. But look, you see down here, position one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Wow, seventy percent of page one. Nice of the organic listings. Now the reason that all those pages are listed there is simply because you can see at number one position. We created a page that says "Kids Kickboxing Classes Pointing," which exactly matches the keyword. Yeah, you can see it in the URL, which is this bit here: slash martial arts slash kids kickboxing classes pointing. So we created a page on his website that was optimized for the keyword. So he's got a chance of ranking. The reason why these other key keywords down here, uh, sorry, these other pages are ranking, is simply because there's no competition. Right. So Google's looking for authority, relevance um, uh, to the keyword, and it's saying, basically, well, all these other six pages are more 
authoritative and more relevant than any of the other pages on the internet. Because if you look for that keyword search, because if you look at that, there's 4,780 results, which is typical for a local business. There won't be like millions of results. Yeah. Because that's where this really works for local businesses still, really to well. Still, the top seven out of 4,780. Yeah, and you'll notice that two of those are videos on yep. YouTube. Again, optimised for the keywords and also optimised to drive traffic to the website. Now, the results of this work that we did with him, with Gareth, was that he was spending at the time about £100 a month on a local newspaper advert. Yep. And in, in six months, he'd, he got about five new leads from that. In five, six months? Five new inquiries in six months. Right. So when we built his new website, created all these new landing pages, did all these videos, he's now getting more than 50 inquiries a month. Now, in percentage terms, that's basically from 10 leads to 600 leads. Yeah. What's that? Can you do the maths? It's a lot. What, five to five to 10 600? in a year to 600 in a year. Wow. It's a 6,000% increase, isn't it? It's, it's quite large, isn't it? Yeah. So... Uh, hopefully, you can see from just that small case study how important it is to get your keywords right. Now, when we go back to the keyword planner, what we're trying to do here is, firstly, take these keywords and just select the ones that are relevant to you. And what, the way that you decide that is we go through a red, amber, green process. Red means that is a keyword that definitely I do not sell. It doesn't match anything. So you might ask, why do you want that keyword? Well, you need to know which keywords Google says are related to your actual keywords. Okay. Because it, when you come to do AdWords late, later on, you need those keywords to, as negative keywords. Because Google's already telling us these keywords relate to... What's a negative keyword? A negative keyword in AdWords is um, you can put in and say, if somebody types in this keyword, don't show my advert. Ah, okay. So it makes your advertising far more efficient from the beginning. Yeah. So it's disqualification. Yes. It's basically saying, look... If somebody types in kickboxing classes, London, yep. don't show my advert. I don't want to pay for that. Because you don't want to, well, it's not no. just that you don't want to pay for it. Well, I, well I actually, mean, we're going into AdWords territory again. All right. It's, it's difficult not to, really. Um, what it actually means is that if somebody does type in kids' kickboxing classes, London, and they see your advert for Poynton, they're not going to click on your ad. Yeah. What that means is you get a lower click-through rate. And Google charges you more if you have a lower click-through rate. Ah, okay. So it costs you more money. So it's really worth doing this at this stage. Even if you're not planning on doing AdWords right now, yeah. you need to have that knowledge so and that data. So this is like the foundations for the house. It's the found, absolutely. I mean, but you've, you've jumped ahead to the, the whole web, how to build a website properly. That's in the next module. It's in the next module. So I'll, right. say, I'll <laughs> save my funny story for the next module. Oh, yes. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so let's go back to this uh, employment law solicitor because that's just a keyword. I've just plucked, I didn't prepare this keyword. I've just plucked it out of obscurity. And back to the screen. If we go, thanks, Zach. So if we go here, Employment Law Solicitor, I'm going to add that click. Now you see this one here, Employment Law Solicitors Manchester, that's £8.63. That's a considerable, that's like 60% more for that keyword. Yeah. But I want it. I want this in my plan. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just clicking on all the keywords that I think are relevant to, for me. The, okay, the, the, and you're doing that just by purely clicking those double arrows at the end of the line that yeah. says add to plan. That's right, just there on add to plan. Okay. Click, click, click. So I'm, I'm adding all this data, <clears throat> and what I'm doing is I'm going to then put them into a spreadsheet, because what I've got to do then is sort these keywords out, <clears throat> firstly into reds, then into ambers, and then into greens. Now, amber means that it's ambiguous. Mm -hmm. It means that what, what we're trying to work out here is, and this is why you have to do this yourself, because it's your business. You really understand your business better than anybody else. So I don't know much about employment law, but I can already see that if I go down this list, you see, here's an example, family law solicitors. Google's telling us here that family law solicitors is a keyword that relates to employment law solicitors, mm -hmm. which means that if you do run an advert on Google, it may show your advert up if somebody types that in, if you haven't got it in as a negative keyword. So that's why you must have family law solicitors as a red keyword okay. in, your, in your data, because this is the foundation of all your online marketing going forward with everything. Yeah. Now, you're also looking for um, ambiguous ones. Now, here, employment laws, that could be an amber keyword. Yeah. Because employment law solicitors Nottingham, for example, if you're based in Nottingham and you're an employment lawyer, yeah. that's a big green keyword. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, it's got commercial intent built into it. Yeah. But employment laws, maybe 
Maybe some of the people typing in employment laws are looking for an employment law solicitor. Maybe. But you don't know this. Right. So it goes into what I call the Amber Group. Because the Amber Group needs testing in AdWords at some point. Because you can say, Google, show my advert if somebody type employment laws, and then measure it to see if anybody um, fills out a form. So we can measure all of that from the, from, from the get-go. And then if it costs £500 for a lead to come in from that keyword, and we're measuring it properly, and it doesn't make any profit, yeah. turn it off. Okay. Put it in as a negative keyword. So the amber ones are sort of stage two of the testing process. But stage one of the testing process is to get your green keywords, as many green keywords as you can. Okay, and when we get to this report, you're going to show us how you break them down between green, amber, and red. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've just shown you the kind of thought process. No, I understand here. thought and process. I, I'm but not for a technophobe's guide, for a technophobe's pra guide. practical yeah. show step by step. So let's go down to pull a few more keywords into here. What is employment law? I love those keywords. Question keywords are fantastic. Yeah. Because question keywords, like what is employment law, can be a fantastic way of building a list. Yeah. If you answer the question. And some videos. What is, exactly. Yeah. But if you can answer the question and get people to give your email address as well, they're, they're wonderful and they're really good for, I'll show you a little, in fact, I'll just show you a little um, example of how I've used that for another client. Yeah. So this is, um, this is a keyword, this is a client in the personal injury market. And they, their cost per click, do you know how much it costs? I think I might have It's huge. It's over £60 per click. Is it? Per click. Per click. That's a lot of money. And, so, and, that, and that's, so, not, that's not a conversion into a sale. No. That's just to get the lead. It's just a click. No, it's yeah. not to get the lead. It's just a click. It's just it's not for even the click. That. It's not even a lead. Wow. The cost per lead is something. So somebody yeah. clicks on that, goes to their website. Yeah. And they're paying sixty pounds. Absolutely. So I'm going to try to remember what the keyword. So here's an example of how we use this. These question keywords can be a very, very good way of generating leads and building a list up um, because they really do live in the long tail. Yeah. They're really long tail keywords. So I'm going to put in how much compensation for a grade two whiplash. I think it is. As you can tell, I, I have a million keywords in my head at any one time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there you can see here, Whitlash. Now, these, these um, first three adverts, they're, they're £60 plus. Wow. And these ones down the right-hand side. Now, here's my client, Beardsall's Personal Injury. In position two, three, four. Two, three, four. Let's see if there's anything else there. Yeah, so they've got 30% of page one. And there's, you can see how this, this is a blog post <clears throat> that perfectly matches or pretty much perfectly matches the keyword. So we found the long tail keyword, and then we've created some content on it. In this case, we've created a blog post because, but in, in most cases when you do your preliminary research, you won't find these keywords. Right. Because the, Google won't give you this much data. That's what I said earlier yeah. about the keyword planet. It gives you a snapshot, it gives you a picture, and it allows you to read the mind of the market. And it's also telling you what Google thinks relates. You see how powerful this data is? Yes. Yeah? And it's not difficult to do this. It's just that you need to have a bit of input yourself because if it's your business... I take the time to do it. You've got to take the time to do this. Yeah. And I see so many websites built that have none of this in there. It breaks my well, heart. Because people don't know. Yeah, but it's, it's website designers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm coming back. I'm going to tell the story. You know, the last person you should go to to get a website built is a website designer because it's a bit like asking a painter and decorator to build you a new house. The first person you should go to is an SEO guy. The architect. The architect. Oh, right, from a house. house. Right, yeah. sorry. If you want to build a new house, you need to go to the architect. Now, very few agencies go through this process because they're all about designing something pretty yeah. that appeals to the ego of the client. Now, you've got to take your ego out of the way, and you need to do your own research because you can do this yourself, right? This is really powerful stuff. So, let's have a look for this. So, how much great? I'm just going to show you this blog post here. <clears throat> I don't think this is a perfect example because I've got a feeling that we've not put the full... Ah, it's the blog results. There we go. So if I click on this one here, yeah, this one is there, and I, I don't think the form's even there. Right. Yeah, because this is, this is one of the key things about internet marketing you need to understand. Imperfect action is always preferable to perfect inaction. Yes. Right? <laughs> I like that. This is imperfect action. What we've done is build... I can't remember exactly how many, but 40, 50 long tail blog posts based upon question based keywords for this client. Yeah. And what the process we go through, because that's a lot of content to get produced, the process we go through is right, firstly, we write the blog post, then we write a couple of paragraphs, then, then they're published. 
Because as soon as you publish them, they have a chance to get ranking. It's that authority. We then go back over them, and then we put something else up that's going to help increase the conversion rates. In this case, a copy of a, a guide that's been designed. So it looks like a real book, because yep. you know, that gives it more perceived value. Yes. Third stage of the process would be to put in an email form there, which we haven't done yet. So as a note for me, when I get back um, home, I'm going to go and finish this off. But that, that can be a form that you can easily get from different email autoresponders like Aweber, Infusionsoft, um, MailChimp. And if you haven't heard of any of those, don't worry, we'll put links up to all of those in the, in the training. So this has the potential then of ranking because, and the reason why this ranks, is not because this site has massive authority, it's simply because nobody, help, nobody else has gone to the effort of creating the content matching the keyword. Right. So, you go back to your... It's well worth doing at £60 a click. It's well worth doing if it's 10p a click. Yeah. Because every, anything you can do to reduce your cost of acquisition, to gather more traffic, traffic plus conversions plus business process equals profits. That mm. is internet marketing in a nutshell. Okay, so what we're trying to do is get the with the keyword research stage is to get the intelligence together first, yeah. so that we can actually say, okay, I know how big this market is, I know how many people now are searching on these different search terms, I now know that how much it's going to cost me to advertise on these things, I now know which keywords Google thinks are relevant, but I know are not relevant, so I can put those into my AdWords. I now know how to now create content, which we're going to cover in the second video. So. The process is like this. So you go down and you just keep adding more of these keywords here, uh, like this. And I'm just randomly adding these in just yeah. to illustrate the point. Now, the, over here on the right hand side, you can see there's a download plan button. So I'm just going to click on download the plan. Usually takes a few seconds. I'm going to put it in Excel CSV there, not AdWords Editor. AdWords Editor is for advanced AdWords users. So I'm not going to cover that off here. Click on download and see the file. Already, so this is so you so you do need Excel on your ideally on your on your Mac or on your PC to to, to do this. Yeah, I mean you could you could just copy and paste and put it into Word if you don't like Excel. Yeah, but there's online Excel, isn't there now? There you is. Know, so yeah. you, can, you could get you, there's the um, there's the online version that you can um, if you just type Excel. What's it called? The the web version. The web version. Yeah, of that Excel. anybody can use. So you don't even actually, you don't well, have I'm, to. I'm own actually the product. I'm rubbish at Excel. Are you? Absolutely useless at it. I'm, I am an Excel technophobe. Right. I hold my hands up. I've just never. Bothered. I'll do a course for you. If that's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've never bothered to learn Excel, basically because my wife is amazing at it. Oh, is she? So I just say, could you sort this out? And I've been doing that for ten years. So yeah, I just I bet you have. learned it. <laughs> it's called delegation. Delegation. Yeah. <laughs> which is another key. <laughs> so you can see here that I've, I've just there. I've got the keywords here. Yeah, and what we're what we're trying to do here is um, you've got all this data there. You've got the um, average monthly searches, the competition strength. Um, 0.97 is kind of high. You know, it's like it's a percentage basically. Yeah. Suggested bids. This is all in interesting data, and you can see that employment law solicitor London is twice as expensive as the general keyword employment law solicitor. Okay, so let me just let me just clarify this because yeah. you because you read this and you see it straight away. It's yeah. like the first time you try and look at a profit and loss account or a spread or a um, you know, a, or a, a balance sheet. It once you've done it a few times, you can see it. So let's just let's just go through these sections. Average monthly search then. So it's saying that the the term employment law there on average is searched 27,100 times per month. So that's the short Where's it saying that? Uh, employment law 27,100, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Yes, yeah. I'm yeah. just reading the, reading the data. Yeah. And it's saying there that the suggested bid, so if you wanted to just try to get employment law as your, as your keyword that somebody's going to click on, it's, the, it's suggested that you're going to be paying up to £4.84. Yeah. Yeah? Or that's where you should be around. Yeah. And you need to go higher than that if you want to, to, if you want to rank higher. above one of your competitors. Although AdWords is a little bit, more, little bit, little bit cleverer than that. And okay. that's why in the AdWords module, I'm going to show you how to get the traffic, get a high click-through rate, and get Google to charge you less per click. Okay. But we'll cover that off in another video. But for example, if you wanted Employment Law Solicitors Leicester, if you were a Leicester-based Employment Law Solicitor, then obviously that's a longer, ta longer tail keyword from what you've been saying. That's a suggested only, bid zero. But it's only been 30 clicks <laughs> per month. Yeah. Which means that if you are in Leicester and you can put that in, you should, and you make a blog post about that, or you make a video about that, you'll be cleaning up. Not necessarily. Right. Because there, there, there aren't that many searches for it in Leicester. Okay, but if you reason. are, there's one a day yeah. per month, if, if we're saying this yeah. average per month. And if you are that employment law solicitor in Leicester, you should then be getting that traffic. 
You should, should appear number one on Google. Yeah, well, especially if you're doing AdWords, you will. And if you create content that's based upon it, I haven't obviously checked this keyword, yeah. then, then you've got a chance of ranking for it. Okay. But it's saying the competition is 0.91 there for Leicester. Right. Right, which is high competition, which means other people are advertising on it. But then it's saying suggested bid zero, which, again, is proof that don't trust all the data that Google gives you. Okay. Because it's not perfect. So the process is, thanks for that, Tim. No, you're welcome. <laughs> the process is... <laughs> I've got Zach Lark in my ear now. 21,000 of those people have searched it on a computer. Yeah. 6,600 have searched it on a mobile phone. And 4,860 have searched it on a tablet, like an iPad Very or interesting a... Interesting data as well. Which but it, also... But it uh, just shows how it's moving away from computers, Oh, it's it? all mobile. You must have a mobile-ready website. So 10,000... Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So 11,000 clicks there have been on mobile or on tablet. Well, yeah, that's, that's absolutely right, yeah. Which yeah. is half of the traffic. It shows that it is moving. And Absolutely. We're, we're now in April 2014. Yeah. So where's it going I mean, to be? in a, two years, that desktop figure will be right down the bottom. Yeah. No, so you must have a mobile-ready site. But on the keyword research side of things, so this process here, let's say, for example, I'm a solicitor based in Manchester. Yeah. And I do employment law. But I, I, do, I have clients um, all over the country. So these keywords are going to be, the, the employment law solicitor in Manchester, I'm going to want that. Right. I'm going to want the one that says Liverpool. I'm going to want the one that says London. I need to organize my content based around these keywords. That means I've got to create landing pages. A landing page yeah. is simply a page that somebody lands on like this. This is a landing page. This is actually a blog post, but it's still a landing page. If I go here to um, personal injury, for example, and clicking on accident compensation, that is a landing page. You can see the URL there. That's the landing page that's optimised for the keyword accident compensation. Because you said, because I, I heard Mark pre uh, present over the weekend to uh, to a live to a live audience uh, for a two day event, and you said that the majority of people that arrive at your website are not arriving through your homepage. Well, that's really yeah. You I hand use... out your, your your business card to yeah. someone. That's different. They're yeah. going to land on your homepage. Yeah. But the majority of searches are never coming into the homepage. Is that right? right? Well, no. I mean, the majority of searches will go on your homepage because that's where the the, the majority of traffic should go. But if you follow this, <clears throat> if you imagine like uh, Top Skips, which is you know the homepage is optimized for the big keyword skip yeah. line. So that's the one where the most single traffic is. But the most traffic in total will come from individual landing pages that you've created on your site. Okay. So 80% of your traffic should come from the other pages, the other landing pages on your website. Right. So now explain what a landing page is. So a landing page is simply where somebody lands on your page, on your okay. website. So it's a web page. That... I think, yeah, I think the analogy that I used at the weekend was um, most people build their websites like, like a Harrods store. Yeah. So all the efforts put into the front of the shop. So when you walk in, all of that trust, that everything that Harrods is about is as you walk through the front of the shop, isn't it? Yeah. Most people build their websites like that. So you go through the front door and it says if you want haberdashery, go there. If you want trousers, go there. If you want antique furniture, go there. You know, it's pointing to the different departments. But that is not the way that people browse on the internet. The way that people browse on the internet, the way of pushing that analogy further, is that they will land directly in front of the product that they're looking to buy. Because they've just typed in jeans from Harrods. Yeah. They're going to land at the jeans section from Harrods on their website. Do you see what I mean? So that's a landing page. Totally, yeah. I think we've got that clear. Yeah, we? yeah. I hope you understand that. Um, so, so we go back to the uh, Excel spreadsheet and we have a look at uh, some of these keywords. So I'm thinking here, free employment law advice. Hmm. Do I want to give free employment law advice? Maybe I do, if I'm an employment law uh, lawyer. But does that have uh, commercial intent? Probably not. Not really. So it goes into the amber list for me. So I, 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 literally, the, the manual way of doing this is just say, right, okay, this is going to go in the amber list. And I'm just going to create an amber list down here. And you go through this process like this. Uh, no wind, no feed. That might be a signal to me. I don't want to do that. Uh, I mean, I happen to know that no wind, no feed is being cut drastically by the government at the moment. So that might go in there as a red. Right. I might not want that kind of work. So actually, I might put it down here. So it's, this process is fairly straightforward. So I'm just going to go up here and say this one may be amber. This one may be uh, red. And these may be green. <clears throat> now, the next part of the process, let's just assume that I've filled this up with all the keywords from the Google Planner. Yes. That is not all the data that's freely available to you. I'll show you what I mean. If I go back to Google itself, 
And if I type in uh, employment law, do you see this bit here? That's Google, that's Google Suggest. Okay. Now, what's really interesting about Google Suggest is that it it suggests other keywords that aren't necessarily going to be found in the keyword planner. So the process that I used to go through in the old days was look for these keywords and then write them down and then yeah. upload them. But fortunately, somebody fixed this problem with uh, a tool called Ubersuggest. Ubersuggest.org. So that's U-B-E-R, yeah. the word suggest.org. Yeah. Basically, what Ubersuggest does is it pulls all that data into one place. Okay. So I'm just going to type in the same keyword here again. Oh, it's jumped. Was it? Yes, it has. So let's hope this works because it was working the other day. You've missed an O in employ. Thank you. It's all right. That's why, very, that's why he's here. It's very hard. He's not just a pretty face. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to type when you've got people watching. Uh, it is. It is. So I, I, I always get these wrong. If you get these wrong, don't feel bad. I've been, get, I've been getting these wrong for years. Two, nine, eight, four. Let's try that. So what this does is sends a little program out to go to Google, and then it um, creates lots of variables on it with plus A, plus B, plus C, that kind of thing you see here. Wow, what a brilliant site. Yeah, so there's Employment Law Solicitor. There's all the towns. These are, these are all from, this is all Google's data. It's just that this is saving you the, the, the process of having to go in and do it all manually like I used to do. Shortcut. Exactly. Yeah. So, and it's free. So Employment Law, we like free. So we? Employment Law Solicitor Plus will be... If you put a plus after it. the search term, these are the suggestions that Google's coming up with. Okay. If you put plus A, it's coming up with these. You see how you're digging down deeper into this Oh, now? wow. So, so these are all the keywords, the long tail keywords beginning with A, then B, then C. That's right. And it goes through the list um, down to Z. And then, what is it? It's just gone to Y. Yeah, it's gone to Y. But you can see now. There's how many towns beginning with Z. No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> Depends where you live, I suppose. But in England... Um, Zebedee land, that's all I can think of. <laughs> that's not real, is that? It's just my imagination. Anyway, so here's a big long Moving list. <laughs> here's a big long list. Now, what you've got to do, you're going through the same process. You're saying, okay, are these green, amber, red? And then you put them into your spreadsheet. Right. Then the next part of the process is, if you imagine you've got all these green ones here, what you need to do is start organizing these keywords into thematically related groups. Thematically created groups. Thematically related. Oh, groups. related groups. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So, for example, um, you might have, if you are a na nationwide employment law solicitor, yeah. you, may, you may have a website that's optimized for bobsolicitors.co.uk slash employment law solicitors slash locations. That might be your URL file structure. Yeah. And then you might have a page that says employment law solicitors London, employment law solicitors Manchester. So, that group of keywords that would be a theme. The theme would be the location. Yeah. And that, so they're thematically related groups. So then the next one, and you, you usually put that into traffic order as well. So the ones with the highest traffic would go at the top, and then you just work down the list for anywhere that's green in location-based. When you say put them in traffic order, so you mean they're the ones, the ones with the highest amount of traffic are the ones you'd create first? Absolutely, because it's the 80-20 the rule, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you're going to get most of your traffic from the ones with the highest What's traffic. What's the 80-20 rule for those that don't know? You get 80% of your business from 20% of your customers, for example. You okay. 80% of your productivity comes from 20% of the things that you do. It's just a... It's the Pareto Google principle. It. Yeah, yeah. Is it Pareto? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Pareto. Um, P-A-R-E-T-O, in case you want to have a well, look. Well, it's effort versus reward, basically, yeah. isn't it? Thank you for that. Um, so you can see that... It, oh, I've seen one there. Look, law solicitor. We don't want that one. Did you see that, guys, or did I lose it? There it is. Yeah, you did, yeah. So law solicitor, that's way too... That's disappearing for some... I've already taken it out. That, for example, is way too broad. Yeah? Yeah. You're an employment law solicitor, and that's all you do. Then law solicitor isn't really... A percentage of people are going to be looking for employment law, but you really want the ones that are looking for employment law. Other things down here that say employment law, employment contract law. Now, that may become a keyword that requires its own page because you're going to write an art, you can use that to write an article about employment contract law. Mm. If that becomes a useful article to somebody, it may bring you business. So you need to create content for that. So it's all about getting your keywords together, sorting them out in order to have a plan for the content you're going to create. Okay. So I don't know how long we've been talking for now, but I think that is pretty much the end of the keyword research 
section in Technofo's guide. Right. Uh, in the next one, we're going to cover off how to organize that content and create a website structure that has search engine optimization, your keywords built into the structure. So when you launch it, when it goes live, you have a fighting chance of ranking for the keywords that you've already identified as the ones that you want to rank for, the ones that have commercial intent in. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. If you just want to flip back to the, uh, yeah. to the keynote slide and I press will, play. I, I don't do know that. about you, but I've learned loads in that module. Absolutely fantastic. Mark, thank you very much for sharing that with us. It, it's, it's, uh, you know what I love about making products like this is I sit here in this chair and I get to ask the questions that you at home would want to ask if you were sitting here, I hope. Uh, and um, I always sit here thinking, I'm just ready for this recording to be finished now because I want to go and get on with this. <laughs> It's, it's one of those things yeah, that makes well, you good. think, oh, I, I need to be doing that for my own business. Yes, you should do. I didn't know how to do it, well, and we'll now do it I do. This. Yeah, absolutely. Let's it's go fantastic. for a cup of tea, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Perfect.